Sometimes you might hear people talk about the generative process specification for a probability distribution. And this is basically a handy convention, a handy convention for specifying a probability distribution in a more compact way. And it's made more compact because you leave out certain conditional independence properties from the specification. And by when you use this convention, those conditional independence properties are implicitly implied. So it's called a generative, people refer to this as a generative process specification, but there's nothing that's necessarily generative about a model that you that you specify in this way. It can be applied to other types of models as well. But it's maybe most applicable to generative types of models. So what is it? What is this? What is this thing? Before so so instead of giving you a formal definition, let me just give you a little example. So this will be the generative process for a particular distribution. So let's see. Let's say we've got x1, x2 are random variables, and let's say that, let's say maybe they're Bernoulli with probability one half and independent. So I'm giving you the generative process specification for a particular distribution. So this would be x1 and x2. And then let's define, let's say x3 is a random variable. And let's give it some distribution that depends on on x1 and x2. So maybe it's maybe it's normal, say. Maybe its mean is like say x1 plus x2, something like that. And variance, I guess, I don't know, sigma squared, some constant sigma squared. And let's do some more. Let's do let's say x4 has a dis so x4, let's give it some distribution, and we're going to give it a distribution that depends on the ones that the random variables that we've previously defined. So let's say that x4, maybe it's also maybe it's also normal, and maybe it is uh, depends on maybe its mean is I don't know. Let's I mean maybe it's like a some constant a times x2 plus some constant b something like that. Maybe variance one. So at each step here, right, the distribution that I'm defining for x3, for example, depended only on the previously defined random variables. And then x5. Let's do one more. Let's say x5 is, is equal to 1. If x4 is greater or equal to 0, I'm just making stuff up. This is just totally arbitrary. The important thing is that at each step, the random variable, the distribution, depends on only depends only on the previously defined random variables. Okay, so this would be the generative process specification for a particular distribution. And the convention, so the convention is the following. So the convention is that when you say this, you mean that these random variables have that that the joint distribution, like if x is the vector of all these, that x, that's a funny looking x, that x respects the following graph. So the graph is the, the graph that it respects follows the sort of order of these definitions. So we had x1 and x2 and they were independent. So we draw them this way. And then x3 depends on the definition of its distribution dependent on x1 and x2. So we would put x3, we would put an arrow from x1 to x3 and from x2 to x3. And then x4, we would have x4, and it depended on x2. And x5, the definition for its distribution, depended only on x4. So the convention is that x 
respects this graph. And in other words, that there are, that this graph, since x respects this graph, this that implies that x has certain conditional independence properties. And those conditional independence properties are not necessarily implied by these by these statements here. So for example, for example, so x3, this graph implies that x3 and x4 are conditionally independent given x2. That might not be immediately obvious at this point, but a little later on we're going to look at the conditional independence properties, some shortcuts for, for, for evaluating and understanding what the conditional independence properties implied by a graph, by a graphical model are. And so, so maybe it will be a little more obvious later on why x3 and x4 are conditionally independent given x2 under this, this graph. But it's possible if you know that these these statements could each individually be true, and if we weren't following this convention, that x3 that that might not hold. For example, so let's see. I I won't make I won't be able to probably make this explicit, but here the the marginal distribution or the conditional distribution. Let's say so under the marginal distribution on x1, x2, and x3. These statements could hold x1 and x2 could be Bernoulli under that marginal and x3 you know condition on x1 and x2 might might have this con the conditional distribution where you set those equal to their values and also at the same time it might be that x2 the marginal distribution on x2 and x4 satisfied this property and this but that x3 and x4 had some other dependency between them. So it's possible that these, these statements could hold and x3 and x4 could still be conditionally dependent given x2. It's possible for that to happen. Might be simpler examples with coin flips might be easier to see. Like if you had a coin flip, like, well, I won't give it. I won't give it. I won't do that explicitly now. So let me just write down what the, just to remind you, what this, what this means. X respects this graph. That means that your joint distribution x1 through x5 equals probability of x1 times the probability of x2 times the probability of x3 given x1 and x2 that's this part times the probability of x4 given x2 times the probability of x5 given x4 so the convention is that when you when you're when you're using this convention and you you say this that you mean that the distribution satisfies this property, that it factors in this way. Okay, so I just wanted to give you that, that uh, tell you what, the, what this means if you hear that. And also I wanted to tell you this because this is a, a really nice way to sort of think about a probability distribution, right? If you have a graphical, if you have a distribution and you have a, a graphical model like this, you could you could give it a generative process specification in this way. You you know you specify x1 and x2 and then x3 depends on those and so on and so forth. And it's just it's a very nice way to sort of intuitively envision or visualize this the the joint distribution. You can sort of just intuitively you can imagine drawing samples. And actually, so that's a good that's a good way to to draw samples from a distribution like this is to draw samples of x1 and x2, you know, flip a couple coins, and then you take their outcome, you add them together, and then you draw a normal, you know, normal random variable with this mean for x3, and then you would draw a normal random variable for x4, and you would make it conditionally independent. So you, when you drew x4, 
that draw would only depend on the value of x2, but that might not necessarily hold. So I, I keep emphasizing that, that, that this is a convention. So you would draw that independently of everything else, just, just depending on x2. And then you would, you know, you would set x5 equal to, to the appropriate value. And that would give you a way to sample from that joint distribution, a very sort of natural way. So another thing, just right nice for sampling and visualization okay so i just wanted to tell you about that that little that little sort of handy convention of the generative process specification